We've seen some huge gains in gold spot price over the last month, but it looks like 2023 may be the year where silver beats gold. What's up you guys, it's Ocean here. It's certainly a great time to have physical silver in your possession. I don't think anyone's debating that. I was just looking at the six month spot price chart and I'll add that to your screen. Silver's been on a tear and it all looks great, but is this a time when we should continue to accumulate? We're gonna answer that question in this video, then toward the end, we're gonna take a look at Uranium Royalty Core. I'm super excited about that. There's some big news happening. If silver ended a trading day above $30, that would be a nine year high. We haven't seen that since 2013, and silver thrives in this economic environment. Silver just loves high inflation. And when the price of everything else just keeps rising, so does the value of your stack. We know buying precious metals is a great way to store wealth. And silver's a lot cheaper than gold. What's interesting is if you look at percentage increases in spot price, it's so easy for silver to outperform gold. If silver spot price went from 2360 to 2450, a gain of just 90 cents, that's almost a 4% rise. Even if gold went from 1865 to 1935, a gain of $70, that's still a bigger gain for those holding silver. It doesn't take much, but the kicker is industrial demand. Accounting for almost 50% of total silver demand, industrial uses are where silver supply can really be crushed. This is where it really makes a difference. Then, the thing is, mostly between automotive and electronics applications, silver demand is expected to grow another 15% over the next five years. So my big question is, are you willing to hold on to your silver for at least five years? It's a no-brainer. Plus, the days of peak silver supply are long gone. The number of total silver ounces mined in 2020, about 840 million, is a fraction of what they were pulling out of the ground even just five years ago. And you have to remember, silver is typically a byproduct of copper and zinc mining. So if silver is what industry needs for solar and electronics and nuclear reactors, and there's no need for excess copper and zinc, those mines aren't moving any faster because a fraction of what most miners actually find is silver. Silver going from $24 to $30 is the same as gold going from $2,000 an ounce to $2,500. They're the exact same on a percentage basis. Now, uranium's in its own world. It's doubled in the last two years. Carbon neutrality's become a buzzword. I'll tell you more about that with uranium royalty. But should you continue to buy silver given the big rise in spot price over the last six months? You know, ultimately, that's going to be a personal decision you'll make for yourself or with your family. I'm seeing cutbacks in silver mining, increased demand for industrial uses, and short excess supply on hand right now. Stockpiles aren't like they were before. At current pace, the COMEX is going to run out of above ground silver in under five years. And that's extremely, extremely conservative. It should only be one or two years, but you know, things happen. It's like when you go to the store and you ask them to check the back, there's nothing in the back but manipulation. I'm just gonna keep stacking, staying within my means and doing what I can. And I'm gonna keep looking for opportunities. And look, this speaks to industrial demand for silver because it's used in nuclear reactor control rods. Over the past six months, silver and gold have done very well. But if you look at two years worth of price history for the precious metals, they've been absolutely destroyed by one industrial use metal in particular, and that's uranium. Take a look at the two year chart. For those looking for opportunities outside of gold and silver, the energy sector is the next big thing. It's gonna be like when the tech sector really blew up in the past. But it's wise to make sure you're investing in quality companies. It's just the smart thing to do. With one and a half million pounds of physical uranium on their balance sheet, the only uranium royalty company 
Uranium Royalty Corps is today's video sponsor. A big thank you to UROY, they're on the NASDAQ market. I've talked about this company before, but I want to circle back. They are the first and only pure play uranium royalty company, and there's some pretty big news. I mentioned the huge gains in uranium price. Well, Uranium Royalty Corps has set up a system to capitalize on this uranium bull market we're just in the beginning stages of. The Camco Corporation owns a uranium project in Canada called MacArthur River. In fact, they're saying it's the world's largest high-grade uranium mine, with ore grades 100 times the global average. So that's great, it's a very profitable mine. Another company called Orano Canada owns 30% of Camco's MacArthur River project. Now, Uranium Royalty Corps has a royalty agreement on Orano's share of the MacArthur River mine. And the big news is UROY has elected to take physical delivery of uranium as their royalty payment. So I'm not the only one saying uranium is undervalued. Uranium Royalty Corps is now stacking physical uranium so that when the uranium spot price goes up, they can sell at a much larger gain to the benefit of shareholders. I'd say that takes some guts, but the uranium bull market has spoken for itself. They'd rather take physical delivery than receive cash because the asset is so undervalued. I think it's a smart move. As of the recording of this video, the Uranium Royalty Corps stock price is $2.52. In August of 2022, before news of their plan to take physical delivery from Murano, the big investment bank, H.C. Wainwright, set a price target of $5.70 for this stock. So you may consider that a promising signal. Down the line, another royalty agreement is in place with another Cameco mine, also in Saskatchewan, Canada, called Cigar Lake. This one isn't going to start paying right away, but when the royalty streams start coming in, it will actually be more profitable than the MacArthur River project. So plenty to look forward to. President and CEO Scott Melby has 37 years experience in the uranium industry, and he actually used to be an executive at Cameco. It pays to develop these relationships. Some of the key shareholders are Uranium Energy Corps, Extract Capital, Altius Resources, Rick Rule, Mega Uranium, Sprott Global, Marin Katusa, Commodity Capital, and KCR Fund. That's something to look for in an investment. You know, who's investing in this company? When you have the highest quality investors, like in this case, it signals strength. Russia's invasion of Ukraine highlighted the importance of energy access. Europe is heavily moving toward higher nuclear power investment, but the war doesn't isolate this fact to the region. China's investing $440 billion. That's nearly half a trillion dollars into nuclear power. The entire world is diving deeper into clean nuclear power, and as a result, they're just going to need to buy uranium to power their investments. The royalty business model is a unique opportunity to cherry pick the very best uranium miners and receive payments in perpetuity. Finally, I'll say, I think you need to keep in mind that carbon neutrality agreements are moving governments away from coal. We know that Russia can't be relied on for natural gas, so this landscape has created a haven for nuclear power to thrive. When the stars align, don't ignore the signal. But as always, do your own due diligence, look up news on this, take a look at their website, and check out Uranium Royalty Corps, stock ticker UROY. Stack wide as the ocean.